Hey everybody, welcome to Rock Around the Ring. I am Kid Cadet, joined always by Sweet D, Miss Danica Janelle. How you doing, girl? Delightful. Uh, big warning to everybody in advance. You may hear a dog barking. It's all Okey good. Okey Sounds <laughs> good. All right. Well, without any further ado, we have two guests of honor. So we're going to bring out the first one. He is the one and only Doc Gallows. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Fantastic. We're very, very excited. Oh, great. Yeah, we are too. Thanks for having us on. Let's get that, let's get that gun in here. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right. He is the one, the only machine gun, Carl Anderson. Hey, a dog barking sounds that's fine. No problem at all. Cause you know, with us, you just never know what we're gonna say or what we're going through or what's going on. It's just <laughs> all in the closet right now, guys. All, I'm back in the closet because it's easiest to be in the closet. The quietest spot in my house. Same here. Fair, fair. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say some of these shows, like we go into it like super structured, and then other ones were just like we're gonna go off script. Okay. Anyway, yeah. so I, I guess to start with this, yeah. obviously, we're you guys are gearing up for uh, talking shop of mania too. Uh, my first question is, you, Doc, you filmed the first one at your at your place, so I want to know who was the messiest and dirtiest offender. Oh. From They're, the first pay per view. Okay, Fabe. A, a laundry <laughs> list of offenders. We actually, uh, <laughs> because of the cleaning bills and the ridiculousness of what happened in my home, we locked the top of the house. The top two floors were locked down. Nobody was allowed up there. And we Smart. kept all the, all the good brothers and good sisters down in my basement in my man cave where I'm at right now. So there's not much down here other than a gym and some podcasting stuff. And of course, lots of eight by tens for selling the gimmick table. So uh, there wasn't too much stuff they could mess up, which was, I went to just go look at the, I went to just go look out the window of the room that I was staying in. I opened the curtain and the whole entire, what's it called? Curtain or whatever. And the curtain rod. Of the whole curtain rod just yeah. fell to the ground. And I went, Oh boy. I guess so at the, at the first talk at show, many the boys are having too much fun. You know, everybody's been in a pandemic. They haven't seen each other in forever. So yeah. we get a little work done the first day. We're prepping for this big shooting day, day one. Well, of course it's like animal house and everybody's partying and having a good time. I get up in the morning, I walk in oh. my bathroom and the toilet paper like holders ripped out of the wall. <laughs> The mirror fell off the freaking bathroom wall. Like, I'm like, what? What did you guys do when I went to sleep? Let's not forget though that that, that you woke up the day the day of our, our actual shooting and had no idea while we were all at your house. Yeah. <laughs> My wife goes, "Hey, get up, Chad and Rocky here." I go, "For what?" Yeah. <laughs> the, good, the good brothers go a little hard to paint. Hey, sometimes. we're in our backyard. Oh yeah, I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> That's amazing. And so uh, what can we expect from Talking Shop and Mania too? Obviously, we saw our, our good brother. Can I say good brother? Am I allowed to use that? Oh, good yes. Okay, sweet. We saw our good brother, Chris Van Vliet, on the trailer for the upcoming oh, one. So, man, yeah. Yeah, we, we, love, we love Chris. We so. we what, what, what can we expect from the second pay-per-view that maybe you guys learned from the first pay-per-view to uh, tweak or do differently? I don't know if we learned anything. We're using the hashtag yeah. worse than the first for a reason. But what I can oh. promise you is if our brand of humor made you laugh the first time, get ready because it's pumped up yeah. time 10 to the point where we're looking at each other going, is this too much? I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah. So, I mean, we went, remember, yeah, we went, with us. <laughs> we went, we went way, way, way far good college. brother style humor but like i watched it back today and i realized that we you still need to be t tipsy when you watch okay. it or do or do whatever you need to do yeah. to get yourself yeah. there. if drinking diet coke makes you makes you relax great do that mm -hmm. but if, if, if drinking 18 beers will help please you do need that. a little cbd oil sneak but i realized that, that whatever it is do your thing I'll say though, I watched it. I, I watched like half of it, like the, a, a preview of half of Talking Shop Mania Two today, and I was I was laughing so hard I was in tears. So like, that's because maybe we think we're the funniest people in the world. That's part of the problem. But, but <laughs> I, it's I'm telling you, it's 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 funny shit. We had awesome. we had a lot of fun on the first one coming up with these random ass cameos because like my wrestling sense of humor goes. I was a wrestling nerd since the time I was eight years old, so I'm like, let's get this guy, let's do this, and they're going, I don't know, and I'm like, I don't know, I think it's funny. <laughs> so we have so much more of that. This thing like we I mean, spent a whole like, lot more money. <laughs> Fifty wrestlers book. It was insane. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah, amazing. We're, we're kind of broke here, again. So, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's all worth it. Bank account. We really, we really went all out there with the budget on this thing. Yeah, it feels like we got. It feels like we got fired again, like we did in July or, whatever, or April. Or whatever. I guess. Um, speaking of budgets, uh, off the record, whose booking rate was higher, Stang or Virgil? Cool. Well, we had to go Stang. If you're going to keep coming back and be a recurring theme in the talking shop of Mania Universe, we need a brother price. I mean, we can't be paying you the full tilt every time. So, Virgil, but you know Virgil was pretty great, though. Virgil was amazing. If you haven't heard, there's an, a talking shop, an episode of our podcast. We drop new ones every Sunday. We just dropped Goldberg. That was a big one. But when they were here, we didn't have time to do one. Uh, so, Emilio Sparks, our editor, was going around. He interviews my wife, Stang, a couple people. And then Virgil just kind of walks in and starts interviewing himself and <laughs> it's pretty amazing and worth a listen if you want if you if you hear that episode where uh Emilio's going around getting thoughts and comments and then Virgil interviewing himself is one of the things I popped for the most I don't know if we're allowed to call him Virgil I've been saying well Vincent. I had yeah oh, let's just say okay. let's say Vincent but I, I I realized I had to have a mask on when I talked to him he spit on me a hundred times when he talked <laughs> It's like, it's like this is a big problem. Sauce, I got tested immediately. I went. Oh, oh, no, I need another. That's, a, that's an Virgil exclusive. Spit my mouth. <laughs> Virgil, okay. Virgil well, spit on me. A, Virgil spit on me a hundred times in a two second conversation. Oh, Dude, I was what laughing. An honor. I was laughing so hard. There's this final scene before we got the lighting right. You have to add all this, all this stuff that we didn't know anything about before we just yeah. decided we're going to start having pay per views. And uh, I was like, we flew Virgil down here. We paid Virgil. He spent the day at my house. And you can barely even see him on camera because our lighting was so screwed up. We had to go back <laughs> yep. through and brighten everything because it's nighttime. We got dark gear on, you know, yeah. and he's off on the side. And I'm like, oh, my God, if we flew him down here and paid him and you don't get to see him, we got to brighten the shit up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Fair, fair. All right, all right. Like it's kind of in that vein. My first question for y'all is, what's it been like filming and wrestling during a pandemic? Weird. It's different. It's weird. That's why I think it was so fun having everybody here because all the boys wanted to see each other, especially a lot of the old school brothers like like Virgil and some of those guys. Like, there's not a lot to do right now. You know, we go to we go to Nashville and uh, and we film the Impact tapings and, and do that stuff, and then. You know, I'm able to run shows here in Georgia, but they have to be socially distanced. And there's like weird parameters on everything. So it's not very fun wrestling in front of nobody. You know, uh, we, we work for a it's, reaction. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's different. But like, you know, we do the best we can. It's a uh, impact. Impact is really cool, man. They got to like it's being involved with them and, and letting them uh, just being being there like during all this with all that's going on. It's been uh, it's been a blessing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we, We've had a lot of fun with those guys, and, and we're going to continue to. And they support all of our outside ventures, and we we wear that. Yeah. We love being impact guys. It's been great. And and that's I think what's most amazing is that you guys now have created like this your own space in the wrestling world, and you guys have had the opportunity to wrestle all over the world for so many different promotions. But I want to know when you guys initially joined the Bullet Club, did you know what kind of cultural impact you would have on the history of wrestling? Man, you know, in our, I like to say yes, but I didn't realize it was going to be as cool as it was. I, I always like, I knew that we all got along so well and how cool that the Bullet Club was and how cool it still even is. Even, and to be, to have been involved in that in such a cool, in such a cool, fuck, such a cool thing. And um, to know that we, man, I can still remember when Gallows came over in 2013, the end of it. And, we were just, I mean, we were running hot, man. And then the, the Tokyo Dome came, then AJ Styles came in April of 14. And we, it just went to a whole, a whole different level. It's cool. To, it's cool to be involved in that. It's, it's really cool. It's uh, it, it feels like, you know, when you work like for WWE or you work for new Japan, one of these companies where there's a hardcore wrestling schedule where you're doing it several nights a week, you get into a bubble where you don't realize what's really going on. And I remember, him and I talking and somebody had on like, like WrestleMania and we were in Japan and somebody had it on a laptop and we saw all these bullet club shirts and then like go home and go to the mall to take my kids school shop. And I'm seeing people like normal people wearing bullet club shirts. And I was like, Oh shit, this thing's taking off. It was, it was a really cool feeling. Very nice. Well, so you guys, you mentioned impact. So what's been the best part about working for a company like impact? <sighs> it's a freedom, man. It's so different. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm talking about talking shop mania talking about impact like they ran a commercial for us on their tv show as soon as we signed for this pay-per-view we're doing like 
they just have been so great about letting yeah. us branch out where if we worked somewhere else, we might not be able to do that, you know, with the, the yeah. bourbon and the wine and all these side mm -hmm. projects that we're working on and brand building and the podcast. And um, it's just been really cool to be able to do all that stuff. And it's, it's also been cool to bring, I think, maybe some new eyes to impact too, because we've got a hell of a kick-ass roster right now. Um, the, the, the women's division's awesome. The tag team division's awesome. I think we've been putting out a hell of a show. So it's, it's been pretty cool. It's a breath of fresh air being able to just kind of be free and be there and not have to, uh, you know, Hey, our time in, in WWE was awesome. Uh, we had, we had a good time. We, we, we did what we needed to do. And it was, I mean, I, I, literally, I guess it was, it was time to leave. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that we're gone and I'm glad where we are, where we are because we can, we can be us and have fun. Yeah. It's, it's helped us tremendously to become, you know, the real us again, which we needed badly. <laughs> Definitely. So, okay, let's see. Um, what would you say is the best piece of advice that you guys were given at the beginning of your wrestling careers? Like something that still sticks with you to this day. I, I've, I've recycled it a hundred times. Yeah. But don't, don't take no for an answer. No, not an answer. It's just another question. Keep pushing. If you're listening to this, whether you want to be a train driver or a wrestling superstar or whatever, do not take no for an answer. Go get it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something because you can't. You got to remember too. I'm a I'm a normal sized human being, so like people, you know, <laughs> I tell people that, or when I told people I was quitting college and going to be a professional wrestler, they didn't all jump for joy and say and say, "Oh, you're going to be the next rock, or you're going to make any money, or you're going to do these things." They looked at me like I was fucking stupid. Sorry for my language. <laughs> they looked at me. They looked at me like they looked at me like I was an idiot. And so like, and that's okay because it's just you know I was a 20 year old kid when I did. It's just you 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 just gotta if you want it bad enough you 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 just you do it and stick to it. Awesome. Oh yeah, very good Great advice. Advice. So outside of wrestling. What would you guys say uh, fandoms that you had that helped shape you growing up? I was addicted to professional wrestling from the time I saw it. So I wasn't like collecting baseball cards or like looking at football statistics. I had every magazine and every collectible thing you could have. Like I was a wrestling nerd. So that was mm -hmm. the only fandom I ever had. Like we, lo we jo joke now because talk about being in a bubble, like, we were trying to make a joke about somebody being really famous or thinking they were really famous. And the only thing we could, I could compare it to was Mel Gibson. That's how far out of pop culture I am. I still thought Mel Gibson was a leading man in Hollywood. I don't know. <laughs> well, Tom Cruise is always my go-to as well. Yeah, because yeah, we just, Cruise we stopped. Too, right? like, we, we don't know any, like. <laughs> neither of us, neither of us have seen movies in the last, because right. all we cared about was wrestling. And I, I like yeah. sports growing up. I was a big baseball guy and football, basketball, but man, no shit. Like just wrestling just consumed me and just in just, it, it, having an entrance with music and having people cheer sure. it's just man it's just it's the only thing i ever thought about even when i was when i would i i played college baseball right and i remember just having like asking if like dx's music could could play when i went to bat <laughs> like and, and did it yeah it, it did but I, here's I my problem I, 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 I just didn't <laughs> i just didn't i, I I stopped doing so good in college baseball that I didn't get to bat much. So they stopped playing me. So I didn't get to hear it often because all I cared about was wrestling. Fair, you hear fair. it all the time now. You got your yeah. own songs. Yeah, I got my own song now. Heck yeah. All right. So Danica, why don't you ask one more question and then we'll go to the game. And then if we have time after, we'll ask. Ooh, games. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got a game. WrestleMania tag team champions, too. We just want to go. Oh, yeah. Let's things, not, let's not ever forget that. Ooh. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to ask one that's way out of left field. So. If you had to recast wrestlers as, let's say, the Adams family, mm. who would you cast as each role? My God, I don't even know who the Adams family well, is. I mean, I'll tell you this: I saw Drew McIntyre and his wife, and they made a great Gomez and Morticia for Halloween. They really did. oh, nice, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and That's you great. know, as much as I hate to rib on myself, it's just part of my career. Like. People always <laughs> thought when I was Festus that my name was Fester, like Uncle Fester. From the Adams family. It used to piss me off because I'm like, you know, it's not the coolest gimmick in the world anyway. Now I'm Uncle Fester too. Like, what else you guys want to throw on me? So maybe Festus could be Uncle Fester. Well, that's <laughs> like when you. That's like when you when you when you, when you, <laughs> when you try to look like the Joker that time in in oh, Japan. Geez. That would look like Uncle Fester. 
I would try to look like the Joker in Japan, but I, I would have a little too much uh, brother weight on me at the time. So if you paint your whole head white and you have a big white fat beard, it's just it's not an intimidating look at all. Everybody's laughing at me, and I went, come on, damn it. A lot of beers. A lot of beers drunk in Japan. <laughs> a lot of beers were drunk in Japan, yes. Oh, man. All right. So we're actually going to play our game right now, and this is a game of Would You Rather. So there's no wrong answers here. No uh, we got some graphics up on the screen. and we Let's see. Danica, do you want to uh, go first? All right. Okay. Would you rather have your zombie apocalypse leader be Gary Busey or be Randy Quaid? Oof. I'm going with Gary Busey. I think he's I, here. I full blown have to go with Gary Busey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I liked I like Randy Quaid in like the the Christmas vacations, but he's great in that. But I think Busey's crazy enough to save our asses. <laughs> Gary Busey. Gary Busey just almost isn't human, you know. <laughs> Fair, fair. All right. Here's the next one. Okay. Would you rather be on a six hour road trip with the gassy big show or a six hour road trip with a very, very talkative Enzo? Oh, oh my we, God. We love, 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 love the big show, but I have been in an elevator with him when he farted. I'm taking talkative Enzo. We've we've been we've also been in the car when he's dropped one. I mean, he's oh. he's he's got a nice little because well, we rode we rode with Big Show for a while. He needs to, you know. Yeah, yeah we were riding partners for a while. So or a super talkative Enzo man. You guys know you guys have some inside information on all this, don't you? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, we just threw this little thing together. So. Yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> I love them. I love them both, man. I don't. I, it, I guess I gotta take Big Show because he's our he's our he's our guy that 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 took us under his wing and we gotta just you gotta eat those farts, brother. <laughs> yeah, we roll the windows down. Yeah. No, you're not allowed. They're locked. Oh, right. they might peak. Okay. Yeah. Hashtag eat those farts. All right, here's the next one. Here, Danica. <laughs> Hashtag eat those farts. Wrestle in a scuba suit or wrestle in a tuxedo. Jeez, I feel like I've probably done both at some point. Um Ooh. I would I'll say, say give me a tuxedo. Yeah, one time I got hit in the head with a steel chair by Edge, and I was dressed up like Uncle Sam, and I had an Uncle Sam suit on. And it was pretty terrible. Oh. Yeah. I'm a little claustrophobic, and I feel like scuba suits would just be – that's just not my thing. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for you. I do think yeah. a tuxedo match between Rory Fox and Matt Cardona would be amazing at Top Team Shop of Mania 3, though. Oh, my yeah. gosh. It's right? a spoil <laughs> spoiler. Uh, okay. if, we can if we can afford three, it's yeah. a spoiler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. All right. Here's the next one. Uh, would you rather oh go to a theme park with Swoggle or go to a theme park with Freight Train? Oh, my God. Mm, well, Swoggle, he's not going to be calling up to riding the fun rides you want to ride. Yeah. And I think I'd like to take Freight Train around the park and just buy him cotton candy and let's let him people watch and do his thing. He pops the hell out of him. Yeah. I, I, I feel like Freight Train needs to get out a little bit. We'll take care of him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice. All right. To hell with Swoggle. Yeah, that's right. Swallow to hell with you, pal. All right. Sorry, Would you rather have Bjork sing your entrance music or Vince Neil sing your entrance music? Oh, give me Vince Neil. Man, yeah, I, you know, I remember when I was like, I don't know. I just thought, I remember thinking Bork was so hot when I was a kid or whatever. I just, there was like one song I liked. That's it. That's all. I just remember. And I, I remember. And that. you thought she was hot. Yeah. Give me Bjork. <laughs> I mean, she's weird, but she is very attractive. Bjork me, baby. Yeah. Bjork me. All, All right. right. <laughs> Hashtag Bjork me. All right. Here's the next one. <laughs> okay. You're on fire. <laughs> Would you rather have Shia LaBeouf have your back in a bar fight or Charlie Sheen have your back in a bar fight? Well, I think Charlie Sheen's an honorary good brother. I don't care if we win or yeah. lose. He's in there with me. Just because I want to hear some Sheen stories when we're done. Yeah, I'm just such a full blown Charlie Sheen fan. I just, yeah, yeah Shia LaBeouf gets nothing. Yep, sorry. All right. Give me sorry, Char Shia. Char Charlie, me. Clean All cut. Right. All right. All right. Our next one is Would you rather tag team in an actual match with Oliver Platt or with Jack Black? Man. Can I'm going to say Jack Black because I feel like the money's going to be a little higher. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going for the payday on this one, Daddy. I think we wrestle them both, and they're a tag team against us. But he's got to do the full, uh, the full gimmick from the movie. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just think. I don't know. I will rule I, you. 
Ah, Jimmy the King. Rue, Rue, Jimmy King. That's it. Ah, yep. yeah. Rue. Yeah. I still take Jack Black though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Here's the next one. Okay. Would you rather star in the last movie you watched or star in the last TV show you watched? Well, the last TV show we watched, we did star in our special oh. full peg on Access TV. Oh. So, I don't know. I don't remember the last movie I watched either. <laughs> well, I just watched The Wedding Planner last night with with, with, with J Lo and uh, oh, Matthew McConaughey. You know, a little throwback. One of those one of those nights, guys. And so, okay. I, uh, <laughs> so, so, you know what? I wouldn't mind starring in that because I think it did pretty good. Yeah. You okay. make some, you make Once some again, the payday, that. baby. Yeah. All right. All right, all right. Here's the next one. All right, next one. Would you <laughs> would you rather have to base a tag team off of Shakespeare or off of a musical? Oh, give it Shakespeare. Yeah. Oh. For sure. Okay. Yeah, I've been watching this musical though. It's called Zombies on Disney Plus with my kids, and I mean, I it, it's really famous to me. But I don't know if anybody else knows it, unless you have children. Yeah, the only exactly musical so. I know is Cats, and I've never actually seen it. So <laughs> yeah. no, I've also had to watch High School Musical a lot because the two-year-old likes Not that one. I know it, it just <laughs> acting's just it's right. just rotten. Just As rotten. I said, Shakespeare me softly. Yeah. All right, Shakespeare yeah. it is. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather have to wrestle a match while being hopped up on hoot blood wine or wrestle a match after eating a one and a half pound rebarrist? You can't move after that steak. We've had many of those, and 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 I love hoot blood wine, so I'm going to take my chances in there on the hoot blood wine, which, <laughs> by the way, go to tnsmania.com, click on alcohol, buy yourself some hoot blood or some mm. Sauvignon Blanc today. Because the only way we'd be that we would be hopped up on hoot blood wine is if it was like a, maybe an independent match or something. So like we're not doing a whole lot. So it's gonna yeah. be a little heat, little heat on me. Come back to Gallows, yeah. we're good to go. He, little hoot blood hopped up on that. We're all right. We can handle yeah. that. Yeah. All they come for is the magic killer in the one, two, three bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I want to try hoot blood, but I'm a little afraid. It's good. I'm telling I'm you, it's you really this. good. I am not a wine snob by any means. I just drink whatever red wine. And uh, well, this showed up at our house, and my wife is more, you know, into that kind of thing. And, and it's it's like the best Cabernet I've ever had. And she rated it really high too because I was like, if she actually thinks it's good, then it's something. I'm just gonna like it because I'm, you know, depicted as one of the owls on the box, no matter what, on the label. You know? Yeah. But yeah. when I got her thumbs up, I knew we had some good stuff going there. That's cool. Yeah. All right, all right. Maybe I'll try it. Sold. I <laughs> promise you, it's it's really it, it is really good. <laughs> nice. All right, let's go to. Is this our last one? Uh, I don't know. Let's yet. find out. Next. Oh uh, yes. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Would you rather wrestle Stang in a beehive on a pool match with special ref Macaulay Culkin from My Girl? Or wrestle Virgil in Fuck Money in the Bank match. Didn't he? I, I think, didn't he? Didn't he die in in My Girl though? We got stung oh, by the bees. He did. So I mean, is is he is he refing before he gets attacked by killer bees? Or I think it's a resurrection thing. I mean, I don't know. I got to go with that. And Culkin and Stang. Sorry, Virgil. We're taking yeah. Culkin and Stang on this one. Sorry, Verge. Yeah, yeah, because anyway, Macaulay Calkin, if you're listening, you're officially invited to Talk and Shop Mania 3. Give us a brother price. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm down. I, I know he's yeah. like he, he's appeared at quite a few wrestling shows. He likes actually. wrestling, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we we try to get David Arquette, but he kayfabed us, so you know. What's up? Did he really? That? Yeah, he did. Never wrote me back. Good people, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so 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 the secret is do you want do you want the secret on how to book yeah. David Arquette? Yeah, you gotta uh you got to message RJ City, and he'll make it happen for you. Ah, I got you. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That that's how we got him on the show. So, all right. Oh, well, thanks for the thanks for the booking info there. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Before we wrap this up, I guess let's mention that you guys are going to be doing a live talk and shop podcast on November 22nd. Is this correct? I just want to make oh, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what what can you tell us about this live? Oh, it's the show. first ever live talking shop podcast. Uh, it's at Jimmy's Famous Seafood, one of our favorite restaurants in the whole wide world. There's a limited number of tickets, just over a hundred of them available. And in Baltimore, uh, Maryland. You'll see the two of us and Rocky Romero, and then I, I see on here that Sex Ferguson, Chad Too Bad, and Chico El Luchador are booked. We got 
Emilio Estevez of Young Buns fame, our editor. He'll be there. Uh, you got George North on there. You got the music by Josh Morningstar, as always. And we're running a contest right now to, oh. because because Emilio is is a single man. Single. Yeah. He's on Tinder. So we're running a contest. Whoever whoever submits the best reason why they should be Emilio's Tinder date for Talking Shop Mania Live, for Talking Shop Live, uh, they'll get free admission and a free dinner on us. They just have to sit up front with Emilio, and they may or may not be part of the show. So, yeah, well, it's a date. Uh, they're, they're winning. They're winning a date with our. They're winning a date with our. Yes, editor. they're winning a date with the editor. It's November twenty second, six p.m. We're going to rock the live talking shop. We're going to have a socially distanced meet and greet, and then I think there's a pay per view on after they're showing as well. So it's going to be a hell of a night. And boys and girls are both allowed in the running. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Dogs, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, I respect that. I respect yeah. that a lot. Yes. Whoever, whoever wants to date with Emilio. Whoever wants to date with Emilio. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so. Let's <laughs> nice. <see. laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, is there a guest that you guys would like to have on Talk and Shop that you haven't had the opportunity to chat with yet? Uh, we just had Goldberg and he was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think Stone Cold would be great on there. We had a lot of fun doing his podcast. Um, so yeah, we. A lot of times we don't really have a format. It's just us on there bullshitting. Uh, so when we do get cool guests, it's kind of a, yeah. you know, it's a big deal for us. Yeah, we like it. Just hashtag eat those farts, you know. <laughs> eat those farts. <laughs> Vincent's a good, Vincent's a talking shop loyalist. I like Vincent. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. we'd like to get, I think it'd be fun to get Jericho on there because we've had so yeah, much fun with him. And he's a, he's a friend of ours personally. And like, it'd, it'd be cool to get him on. a Halloween party too. I just went to that thing on Saturday. Great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I saw yeah. he was dressed but as Eddie Van Halen. He was, yes. Singing, it was awesome. <laughs> well, did you guys have fun? What I remember was a great time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Danica, you want to ask one final question before we wrap it up? Well, I mean, I guess my my big question is, you know, you've got the podcast, the PPVs, the cartoon. What's the next venture? Are you getting your own brand of like hot air balloons or, you know, what, what do you do next? That does sound yeah. like a, like a we're heck working of a on, We're working on, a, believe it or not, a snack line right now that I think is going to be pretty cool. I'm pretty pumped for it. Um, but yeah, TNSmania.com is the website. It'll direct you to all the cool stuff we're doing. Uh, please listen to the podcast. They, they drop every Sunday morning, talk and shop wherever you listen to your podcasts. We could hawk merch for days. We have it on Collar and Elbow Brand. We have it on ProWrestlingTees.com. We have that stuff all over the place. But most importantly, thanks for following the good brothers. We appreciate all you guys. And I hope you watch Talk and Shop of Mania 2 Friday, November 13th on Worldwide Pay-Per-View at 10 p.m. and on iPay-Per-View via the Fight app where you can pre-order now. Yes, we just we, we just want people to understand that we appreciate them for following us through everything we've been yep. through and just always having our backs no matter what. So... Thank you. Thank you for having a good sense of humor since we're putting out these shitty pay per views. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you have to understand that in this alternate time that we're living in, these shitty pay per views are what we live for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what we yeah. like yeah. to hear. That was our big thing. We were like, people need a laugh right now. And then we did it and they did laugh. And we went, well, now we have to do it again and do it more. And yeah. So that's how this all started. When I say we took it far, I don't know, would right, what would, be, would right or left to be? We took it whatever well, way I, I the good brothers we are. Taking it one way, we we it was like it's on steroids now. <laughs> well, we, we we realized that people like th thought it was funny, so we went, okay, you want you really want to get get to know our humor? Now here we go. So this, the next one is really us badly <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. Well, awesome! I'm definitely looking forward to it. I know Danica is as well. So any oh. final thoughts that you guys want to leave us with here today? Oh, just let us know what you think of Talking Shop of Mania too. We hope you guys all yes. tune in on the thirteenth. We're getting down to the wire. I'm getting pumped. Yeah, please. Yeah, give us a give us a little review or something. Even if I mean, yeah. it's you're not. It's gonna suck. So prepared for yeah, that. So you, you're not gonna offend us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will try our best to offend you. All yes. we have to do worse is than the first. <laughs> just the, the, just thank you for for the time and just for giving yeah. us. Yeah, just, thanks we for just, on. yeah, We're and so give us a chance. This has been wonderful. <laughs> yeah, we've Ooh. we've been looking forward to this for a while. Um, I guess Danica and I should mention this is actually our last stream through galaxy con we oh, are uh we're, we're we're making a move and we're also changing the name of the stream so you guys were our final rock around the ring hey. guests and we really appreciate Congratulations, you guys guys i'm all about onward and upward good for you guys yes we, we love really business-minded people get it going yeah. make lots of money tell us right, about over it to, 
We'll, we'll come try. over to the new one when Talking Shabba Mania 3 is coming out. Let us know that so we mean. can invest. We like to invest. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you, sounds good. Then <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. All we'll right, talk. guys. Well, uh, our next show will be next Tuesday, and uh, we have Laura Wiggins from the uh, show Shameless. So we will nice. see you guys then. Yeah, we're nice. very excited. And so very until cool. then, everybody, hashtag eat those farts. Doc, <laughs> Carl, thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll see you guys real soon. Thanks, Thanks for having you guys. Yeah. Bye, everybody.